So yes, again, a big, big welcome. And so of course, if this is your first guest lecture, uh, the Xamarin University guest lectures are, they're unique, they're exclusive presentations and they're made by industry luminaries. And today I am really excited to introduce uh, not one, but two presenters today. We've got uh, Christian DuPont, and I'm gonna apologize right now if I get your name incorrect, uh, Yevor uh, Georgiev, and they're here from Realm. And they're going to talk about integrating Realm's incredibly popular and highly efficient mobile database solution with Xamarin applications. And with that, I'd like to hand this over to our, uh, our guest lecturers. And again, thank you so much for joining us here today. So this is going to be a quick introduction to Realm Xamarin. And um, as, uh, as Adrian just uh, pointed out, um, it's being presented by myself and Yavor Georgiev. Hey, so um, we wanted to give you a quick introduction to Realm Xamarin. Um, Realm is a database that's been built specifically for mobile. And when we say Realm Xamarin, that's really just one of the products that Realm has. So Realm is a database that's uh, easy to use, but very powerful and very, very highly optimized. It works with many different languages and on many platforms. In the Xamarin University, in the Xamarin Universe, it's currently for iOS and Android. It's um, it's kind of open source, not completely, at least not yet. Um, you can find the source code for the .NET or Xamarin binding at this address that you can see here. Um, the core is written in C++ and is not yet open source, but it will be at some point. We don't currently have a timeline for that, but uh, but it will be open source at some point. So Realm is not an ORM. It's not just uh, built on top of a relational database like SQLite. It's, um, it's a completely re rewritten from scratch uh, library or a product. It's quite a bit different from many uh, relational databases that you might be used to. So the, the thing that separates it the most from such things as SQLite is that there are no joins needed. You don't need to design your models like you would. You can design your models like you would if you were just doing in-memory classes. And when you do a reference between two objects, it's sort of like just plain C-sharp objects. If you want to have uh, many one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationships, you can use um, what we call a realm list. It's, a, it's an iList class that we have for you at the moment. It will be exchange for an iList, uh, so we can use uh, more generic lists um, as we move on, but that's not currently implemented. Um, so just to give you, this is a bit uh, abstract, but just to give you a short idea of what this looks like. When you work with Realm, you design um, model classes like this. So it's basically just a C-sharp class. The only thing that is special about it is that it inherits from the Realm object. So that's a base class that we're providing, and this is the current implementation. This is probably going to change. We're not completely sure what it's going to look like, but at the moment, the way you specify that a class is a Realm class is by inheriting from the Realm object. And what happens now is that um, any public property that is automatic, what normally happens is that the compiler will generate um, getters and setters for you, and it will add an implicit field that stores this value for the property. What we then do is we have a, uh, what we call, a, or what's called a weaver. It's a, 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 some of you may be familiar with the Fody project that's very popular. We have a Fody weaver that is actually a build time code generation tool. So what happens is that we go and change this code that's been made from the compiler so that the name and age and owner fields or properties in this class called dog will actually have uh, replaced their set and get methods underneath the hood. So um, this happens at build time. That means that new code is generated for you. So you don't actually see it. It just sort of works by magic. It can feel a little bit abstract, but it's actually quite nice to work with. And as you can see in, in this example here, this is uh, how you also build relations. So in this example, we have one class called dog that has a person that's the owner. And the person class is also a realm object class. So 
just by uh, virtue of being a realm object, the the person that's called owner is now a relation in the setup. And vice versa, the person has a number of dogs, so that's a too many relationship. And as you can see, we're using the realm list for this particular instance. And you might want to notice that you only add the get method, method for the list because you don't actually instantiate that yourself. That's being done for you when you create the object. Um, so what this essentially means is that um, the, the classes are, they are in the database. They're not just some um, copy of what's in the database. Um, let me try and show you a bit of a more example. So if we have this class dog that's a realm object, what you do to work with this is first we get an instance of a realm. So we have a, uh, the realm class that has a static method called get instance. So that will just give you the default instance of the realm. That's just a database file that's located in uh, a default folder on your iPhone. That's in one place. And if you're on Android, it's somewhere else. Um, you get this file, um, and then you can uh, we have we instantiate uh, an instance of the dog, um, and what you do is you say create object to get the actual object. So realm that create object returns an instance of this uh, dog. You don't say dog Earl equals new dog. Um, that will not create the uh, the persisted version of it. So you use this create object function, and then you can work with your object. So you set the, the name property on this, and what happens is that it's insta instantly uh, persisted. So um, this is what this is basically all you need to do to work with Realm. It's a little bit more involved. As you can see, there's a write uh, call surrounding this, um, and that's actually what uh, creates a transaction. So every time you want to write something to a realm, you have to do it in a transaction. You can read from the realm, as you can see on the line below, uh, you can read the URL name um, by just accessing it as if it was completely normal property. But every time you want to mutate something in the realm, you have to do it in a write transaction. And uh, the way you do it is either you say realm.write, and then you give it this uh, method or this function or delegate that will be run. Or you can use uh, begin write, which will give you a transaction object that's I disposable. So you can also uh, use the more uh, old fashioned transaction pattern if you prefer that. Um, so how do you install this and how do you start working with it? Well, Realm is just a NuGet package, so and as I'm in component as well. So you just get started by adding the Realm package or component to your project. And one thing to notice here is that it relies on the PCL bait and switch pattern. You can go and look that up if uh, if you're not familiar with it. But this basically means that if you're creating a project where you're using a PCL, um, uh, like a portable class library. For your shared code, if you have, for instance, a Xamarin Forms app that works both for iOS and Android, you may have a PCL library that contains the shared code between those two, and you may want to use Realm in that. In that case, you will want to add the Realm of your assemblies. So you want to add it to the request. And what happens? is that the, the piece actually contain executable code. It only contains the signature so that the compiler will be happy. And then when you build for uh, Android or for iOS, um, it will replace all of those calls and all of those accesses with uh, access to whichever uh, version fits that native uh, platform. So it's we have to do this because uh, Realm is actually C++ code that needs to be run and compiled for native. So we couldn't just make it a PCL library, unfortunately. So this webinar is going to consist of a demo where we will be creating a Xamarin Forms app. Um, we're going to use an example we call Quick Journal. We wrote a little blog post about this, so but this is a bit of an extended version of it. Um, so we're going to be going through most of what it takes to create that. We're going to use the PCL for shared code, and uh, we'll support iOS and Android.
So um, I'm going to give the keyboard to Gabor, and he will uh, do some live coding for you. Hello again, everyone. It's my pleasure to live code for you today. So I have a small solution here. Uh, your default Xamarin Forms solution, what you would get when creating a new Xamarin Forms application in Xamarin Studio. It consists of our portable class, portable class library project, and the two Android and iOS projects. So I've already went and added the Realm package to all the projects. Uh, like Christian said, it needs to be added to all the projects in your solution. Uh, <clears throat> right now I have a, a, release, um, a really simple app. I have this one page, which is an empty content page. And because I'm going to use a navigation later on, it's housed in a navigation page. Um, the first thing you're going to do when developing a guest realm is you're going to create models, model classes. So let's go and create a model class. We are going to call it a journal entry. Of course, it has to inherit from a uh, real object. That way, the code generation tool that we run at compile time is going to uh, find a class and rewrite the code just as uh, Christian explained. It's going to have uh, three properties, a title, a date, and of course, a body for our journal entry. So I'm a big fan of the MVM pattern. So this is the model view, <coughs> model view view model pattern. And frankly, I couldn't live without, without it. So I already have a page, and this is going to be my view. And it already has an empty view model. I've taken the liberty of uh, wiring them up together. So I'm going to go and add a list. This is view. It's going to have a simple text cell. It's going to be bound by a list of journal entries coming from the Realm database. And the text cell is going to display the title and the date properties we added to the, to the journal entry class. So next, we need to create a Realm. Sorry about that, live coding cheaters. And we are going to expose an enumerable property of journal entries. So every Realm class has this O method, and it's used to give you, well, as the name suggests, all the entries of uh, this particular type in the database. Um, now, if we run this, we are going to have an empty list, and well, this is going to be somewhat boring. So I am going to do something silly and just create uh, one dummy entry. Yeah, we have a question here as well, and it, uh, the question is, is it still possible to write constructors in order to put some validation on the instantiation of the object? This is something we are working on, and this is related to what Christian said about the code generation and uh, inheriting, in, inheriting from realm object. Right now, the best way to implement validation is writing custom setters. So what you would do if you wanted to validate the date property, for example, would be to add a second computed property 
So public data moves it. Uh, date two, for example. And this is just going to proxy to the original property, which is going to be persisting in, in the realm. And of course, the setter can validate the value somehow if value equals daytime offset. Now, or something, throw an exception. Otherwise, we'll uh, set value to the uh, original property. Something like this. Although we are aware that this is less than ideal, and we want to uh, enable more idiomatic C sharp scenarios when it comes to validation, uh, especially in a data bound scenario. But right now, this is what we have. Okay, fantastic. Does this answer, uh, does this answer the question? Thank you. I think so. So, uh, yes, uh, confirmation of the question. Perfect. Uh, just one <clears throat> quick other interruption. We had a request uh, to either zoom in on the code or if you're able to possibly bump the font up a touch. Let's see if I can do that. Wonderful. Ah. Thank you again. Right now, if I run this and the live coding gods are on my side, this is uh, going to display something on the simulator. All right, so we have our entry. Um, but this is too basic, though. Um, Realm also allows you to uh, delete and modify like any other object store would. Of course, a staple of MVM is commands, and I'm using the command the command pattern here. If oh well, if you aren't familiar with uh, the command pattern in MVM, I suggest you look it up. It's a really terrific way to structure your code. All right. So I'm going to need to bind this in XAML and I'm going to use a context action. Yeah, formatting was kind of messed up. So we're basically binding a menu item to the uh, delete entry command we added and we are passing the current item for the cell as a parameter. Uh, well, it's building off. Got some more questions. Uh, so one is, uh, do you know how big the uh, the Realm package is for an iOS application? So how much overhead is there for adding the NuGet package? Um, the NuGet package contains uh, all sorts of architectures and platforms that we support on iOS and Android. But when you build for iOS for a device with release optimizations, we usually see a megabyte of uptick. And this is also valid for uh, Android, even though Android has uh, a few less architectures by default. Uh, when you have uh, app slicing, for example, in, uh, in iOS, this is going to get rid of all the uh, architectures that you don't use, and this is going to slim down your binary. But if you are really conservative and not slicing anything, usually it's a megabyte. And that's mostly due to the native code Fantastic. All right, so we should have, yes, we have a nice little delete button. And well, nothing happened. Well, there is a reason why nothing happened. And this is because by default, the views over a realm database are not observable. That is to say, they do not implement the I notify property changed interface that Xamarin uh, forms and other data binding frameworks rely on. Likely, this is something that we support. We have the still notify collection chain method. Uh, it takes um, uh, a result set of realm entities and it converts it to something data binding can work on. Now, 
the way this works in Realm is we spawn a background worker, a background worker thread, if you will. And this is going to monitor the query, the result set for changes, so that every time the Realm changes, this is going to compute the exact set of changes, and it's going to raise the collection change event that the Zamari Forms list you understands. However, because this runs on a worker, there is the chance that some sort of error might pop up, and you need to pass an error handler, which takes an exception. And well, for now, I'm just going to uh, print out the exception message. But the general idea is you need to handle this, and if necessary, you are going to need to um, uh, sorry about that. Uh, you are going to need to recreate the result set or the query depending on the, on the kind of error. All right, so if I, if I run this again, we should be getting change notifications. Now, we've, I've got a collection of questions here. Um, I guess. Are you ready for them now, or do you want to finish up your demo first? Uh, let's finish up in just a sec. Absolutely. So, if we delete, the box is gone. And this is what we call the Realm being a React database. Um, even if you had an entirely different thread or an entirely different process, working with the same Realm file, the Realm is going to raise uh, notification events for your objects as if it was modified on the same thread. Um, it's actually a really powerful technique to pass data around. And once you get the hang of it, because it's somewhat unusual, once you get the hang of it, it's a um, really easy way to structure your app, especially on iOS, where when you need to rely on um, separate extension processes that might be operating on the same data. So you might have an iOS host application running the realm file. You might have a share extension or whatever modifying data in the realm file. Because this is a separate process on iOS, um, usually you'd have to implement some sort of message passing. But realm gives you this for free. You are going to get notifications on your host app or your extension when someone else changes the realm database. And it's pretty, I think it's pretty idiomatic when you consider it in data binding terms. Of course, we have a um, more elaborate change notification API, so you can react very efficiently to many changes at once. Uh, now, with this, I'm going to pause the demo uh, halfway through, um, and let's see what the questions are. Fantastic. So I'll do this in order. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what happens if one of my classes needs to inherit from another class? So I think it's in relation to the model objects. Any problem with inheritance? Inheritance is something we explicitly do not support right now. Uh, it would make some assumptions that we are not prepared to guarantee. Uh, when you work with, let's say, any other or, or um, uh, core data springs to mind, uh, you have to do some gymnastics at the storage level to allow for inheritance and polymorphism. Uh, this is not something that we have uh, as a desired result. So all our um, realm bindings, as we call them, for all the languages and platforms we support, uh, explicitly forbid inheritance. Uh, you might add extra functionality on your classes with uh, extension methods and other techniques. But we have no way to guarantee the proper uh, safety semantics of objects that uh, take part in an inheritance chain. OK, great. I've got a bunch more here. So we can answer as many as you like. And we can also push them off to the end as well. So I'll, I'll let you cut me off, but I'll keep answering in the meantime or asking. Uh, is, so the question is, is calling realm.all, the, so the all method, a good idea if you have thousands of entries? Well, all right. Realm is first um, a very performance opti uh, optimized. So Realm all actually re returns a lazily evaluated iQueryable object, 
we have this uh, realness class and it implements uh, a variable. This means that you might call realmpol and then you are going to get um, Oh, thanks. Let's see if I can find this class here. No, well, I'm sorry, you have to take my word for it. So realm results implements I query. Well, this means that you are free to call realm all. You're free to specify um, queries with the where method, for example. And those are only going to be executed and evaluated when you enumerate this. And it's optimized for this particular case where you bind data on screen to a realm. So the usual jitter you would get when instantiating lots and lots of objects is avoided because we optimize for this mobile scenario. That is to say, the specific implementation of our iQuery interface has a clever little enumerator that only instantiates objects as they're needed. So it's very lazily evaluated. But of course, the first time it's uh, evaluated, it's very fast to evaluate again and again. Does this answer the question? I think so. That's great. Uh, so the next question, I, I think this is probably in, in the question is, can we open multiple databases? So the question is, can multiple realms be opened up? Of course. So uh, we have this class that's called realm, confi uh, realm configuration, and it allows you to specify the final name or the complete path for the database. So we can have a path. Uh, I'm going to call my file dummy.realm. And we can pass this configuration object to get instance. Um, a realm configuration is sort of a key to the, data, to the database. It has other properties uh, that enable uh, things like encryption and other characteristics of the database. So if you need to open multiple RAM files at once, you just use multiple RAM configuration objects. Perfect. Now this is sort of a tie-in question. Um, the question is where is the data persisted then by default and is there any control over that? Um, you can control where the data is persisted by passing an absolute path to the RAM configuration constructor, which I just deleted uh, by default. Uh, the data is persisted in the documents folder of the application sandbox and, of course, the equivalent in, uh, in Android. So if you open this file, and I have this prepared from the iOS simulator, if you open this file, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it in the RAM browser, uh, you can see this one entry that we have. Um, it's a yeah, it, it, it's a file on disk, and you can move it around to pass it between applications, if you like. And it's really simple to manage, I guess. Perfect. All right, so still lots of questions, so cut me off any time. Uh, I had a couple questions about uh, encrypted data. So is there any native support for encryption? Of course. Uh, we have encryption baked in. So if you want to you make uh, use of encryption, there is a property on the realm configuration class called an encryption key, and well, you supply a 64 byte, uh, a 64 element byte array, and this is your encryption key. You can learn more about this in our docs and see what the encryption uh, method is. I think we need to uh, get on with the the rest of the presentation, we have a, a couple more slides where Christian is going to get into some more detail about features I've touched, I've touched on here. And afterwards, um, he will hand the mic back to me so I can finish this up and we can take questions later. Right. So Yabo actually touched on this quite a bit, so I don't need to go into that much detail. but. Regarding queries, when you want to query your Realm, you obviously just use plain link. That's a given as we're working with C Sharp and we're all used to using link all the time. So the only thing that's a little bit uh, noticeable here is that queries are live, as we call them. They're kept up to date. So if you use the all method on Realm to get all of the docs that are in your database, you can say dot where on it and you can use obviously both the, the 
the Linksy uh, syntax or the Fluent syntax. You can uh, make a sophisticated query, and that will be kept up to date as well. So in this instance, you will get all the docs that have an age that is less than two. And every time you iterate through this, it's going to give you the updated list of docs that have an age that is less than two. So if it's been changed on a different thread, this will still be up to date. Um, and this ties in a little bit with notifications. So as you saw, uh, Yabo used the to notify collection changed method on Realm result. That will give you a version of the result that implements the to no the I notify collection changed interface. Um, the sort of basic version of it is subscribe for notifications, which is our own API. That will give you a change set and specified as a number of deletes and updates and additions. You can then uh, implement whatever you would like on top of that. Um, we should notice, though, that this is relying on the run loop. So this is being updated behind the scenes, so to speak, every time the run loop executes. So if you're working on a thread, uh, especially on Android, that doesn't have a looper, so a thread you created yourself, there will be no run loop to update this for you. So in that case, you need to call realm.refresh, which is a method that refreshes everything. But most of the time, you will probably be reading your things on the UI uh, thread. And in that case, there's always a run loop, so you'll be fine. Um, and that, with that in mind, let's uh, watch the rest of the app being developed. So it appears with the questions I had, uh, I stole some of Christian's, uh, Christian's thunder. I should apologize. Sorry. <laughs> so I plan to add an additional screen and an additional view to this app. And this is going to allow me to add an, an entry and populate the title and the body fields. So for this, I'm going to add a new view, which is going to be a content page, of course. Sorry, uh, I needed to I needed to use the ZAML option. Yep. And of course, this is going to need its own view model. So the layout of our details page is going to be somewhat more involved. We are going to have a save button in the toolbar. And using a edit simple grid layout, we are going to have a text field to edit the title. And we are going to have a text box, an editor text box, to edit the body of the journal entry. So for this to work, we need to add a few, a few properties on our view model, chief of them, of course, being the realm entry. And in realm, as in, an, as in any other database, we have something we call a transaction. So underneath um, realm is what we call a multi-version concurrent control database. This means in layman's terms that you can have as many read, um, reading views on the realm, but there is only uh, one write possible at a time. A transaction controls a write. So because we are going to be editing an entry here, we need to have an active transaction. Um, 
I'm going to make it so that the transaction is passed from without as well as the journal entry. Since I ended up using a navigation page here for the main page of my application, I am going to navigate from uh, the entries page to the uh, details page. For this, I'm going to need the navigation object and my view model. And I'm going to pass this from my entries page. All right, so let me add an add method and a command here. Now, what this does is it opens a transaction, a write transaction. The write method you see here is a shortcut and commit. In more advanced scenarios, such as this one, um, you have a more, granular a more granular control of how transactions are created, uh, reverted, or committed. So let me flip the order of parameters here. All right, so back in the page code behind, I'm going to be passing an instance of the details view model. All right. So we're missing something crucial here. Uh, you might be able to edit the entry, but you need to go back. So for this, we are going to have a navigation object on this view model as well. So I'm going to add a save command here. What this will do is commit the transaction. Uh, the transaction has three main methods, commit, rollback, and dispose, where dispose is just a shortcut for, uh, for rollback so that you can use a transaction object with the using statement. So I'm going to commit the transaction here. Uh, and then I am going to navigate back. Uh, I can also add a cancel command. This is going to go back and uh, not, not save anything. So If I've already committed the transaction, disposing would be a null op. But if I haven't committed the transaction, disposing it would roll back all the changes. Because we say that the realm objects are their own database, this means that when there is an active write transaction, changes via data binding are going to end up in the database directly. But because we use a versioning scheme, uh, for data in uh, the, the database internally. You might think of it, and my more experienced colleagues are going to cringe at, uh, cringe at this, but I often compare it to Git. So 
A transaction is a way to commit changes or revert changes. Um, in order for uh, this to tie in, I will need to override the on this peering method here and call my view models on this peering method. This is it. Let's see what happens. Oh, uh, I forgot to, uh, to add the app button in the entries page. Sorry about that. of the code that created the dummy first post, but oh well. Right, so we have our title here, and let's call it second post. Worst UI ever. Um, and this is our body. Oh, uh, if I save this, and well, nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Uh, did probably I forgot to wire up some. Yes, I forgot to wire up the save command. this time. <laughs> and it actually worked. Uh, because I mentioned cross-process notifications, uh, I'm actually going to demonstrate this right now with the Realm Browser. If I open the Realm file, the Realm file here with the Realm Browser, I see all the entries I have here. And if I were to delete an entry here, it's, it immediately updates in the Realm Browser. If I were to add an entry here, it shows up in the browser. Uh, this is built on the same foundation of notifications I talked about a while ago. And I really feel this is a very powerful pattern to, for you to take advantage of in your apps. Um, actually, I think this is it for the demo. If someone else has uh, code-related questions, I would love to hear those. Absolutely. We've got a, a good list of questions here. So if you've got a few minutes, let's see if we can get through. Sure. <clears throat> um, we'll start with, so when do you expect to deliver the Xamarin version that has the same features as the other versions? There's some questions about roadmaps as well. Yeah, that's obviously going to be a little bit hard to do because the others are going to keep uh, implementing new features as well. So we can only catch up as fast as we can. It's true that to those of you who might have seen it recently, the, uh, the Realm version 1.0 was uh, recently announced, and the Xamarin version is not yet at 1.0. We haven't decided completely how much we need before we feel that we can call this a 1.0 product, but uh, 
I think it's safe to say that we will reach that within the year, and uh, when that happens, it's going to be very reliable to work with, which I think it is at this point already. But obviously, we are getting a few issues here and there that people have discovered. And are there any public roadmaps available in terms of what features we've developed when? Um, yes, everything is completely transparent. You can go to our GitHub repo and you can see all the issues that are there and we're discussing everything out in the public, so whatever we're prioritizing, you can see on there. That's the only planning that we have, so uh, it's all in GitHub. Fantastic. Now, um, <clears throat> with that, uh, there's a few questions about you know Windows Phone support, EWP support, uh, and I noticed you've got a GitHub issue asking the public what platforms like supported next. So I've pasted that into the chat room. So if it, those of you are, are wishing for EWP support, go ahead and voice your, your support. Do you want to add anything to that for other platforms? Um, it's obviously the most popular GitHub issue that we have. So uh, new support for that is ticking in every day. So we're very aware that this is a popular request. It's uh, it's something we're looking into and, and we want it very much as well. Um, there is the one thing though that the Realm Core is was previously working on iOS and Android already for uh, different languages, but nobody's using it on Windows. So even though we're using it internally on Windows, it's it needs to have some more stability built into it, even the core or before we're, we feel uh, safe releasing it as a proper Windows product. Perfect. And uh, I think this will answer the next question then. Is there a, an editor or a browser for Windows? You, of course, have the, the Mac desktop client. Not at this moment, no. All right, let's get into a few more technical questions here. Um, so one question was about schema changes. So any suggestions, requirements, how is it handled if you, say, update your model object? Yeah, so there's a, there's a migration. API GitHub issue being developed by Yabor at the moment. So this is something that we're expecting to release in the very near future because that's an obvious, obvious need. So for the very basic uh, situation where you simply add a new property to a class or you add another class to your uh, basic schema, you can just go ahead and do that and the Realm file will just be updated. But obviously you're quickly going to run into a situation where you need to do some more complex thing. And the, the basic uh, example we always give is wanting to merge a first name and a last name into a full name or something like that. And you're going to need a migration uh, for that. And uh, we're developing an API for that. So uh, there is a, I believe there's even a PR that you can go and take a look at if you would like. But that is work in progress, so it's not merged into the uh, baseline yet. And it's definitely not released yet, but it will be very soon. Fantastic. So a number of questions about performance, and of course, everyone's asking for the comparison to SQLite. Do you want to make any comments about that? Um, so the, the core of Realm is very, very heavily optimized. But performance is, I mean, so the, we've tried to make some benchmarks. Maybe some of you have seen them. We have them in blog posts, and we feel that our performance is always comparable or better than SQLite. But making a benchmark is really, really hard because what you really want, or if you like, if you want to do proper benchmarking, what you'll end up with is actually a cube of data, not really just a, a number, because there's so many different dimensions that you could change. Like, what happens if I insert 10 million in entries instead of 10,000, or just instead of 10? What happens if I want to query them all at the same time, or if through different threads? And like, if it's uh, one big database with many small entries or a uh, uh, database with few really large entries and so on and so on. So we've made one benchmark app that is in the repo and you can download that and you can run it yourself and you can change all the variables if you'd like to see for your specific scenario if this performs better or worse or you sh should do your own obviously if you want to feel completely safe. But I think it's fair to say that as a general thing, Realm performs very well, and for the hot code paths like getting and setting of properties, which is something that you will be calling many, many times, we're very, very focused on spending as little overhead as absolutely possible. Does Perfect. that answer the question, or should I get deeper into some specific work? 
I think that's great. I think that's that's a good uh, a good high level summary. And, and the simple question is, in many cases, it's faster than SQLite, at least from mm -hmm. from my experience in research. Uh, so I've got a longer question here. I'm going to read it verbatim. So uh, the question is: In our applications, we tend to do our data access, especially writes, behind uh, an I repository uh, interface. And what the, what I'm seeing with Realm is that you basically need to have a page by page transaction object to track and commit changes. Ideally, we want the data layer to pass an object to the view model. The view model would pass it back to the data layer, and the data layer would uh, would say it. So, have you used uh, Realm with this kind of pattern? Would you, in the data layer, do an update or have to pull the object out of the out of Realm using a query and then manually update the object? Uh, in the Java implementation, I see a method copy to Realm. Is this something that will come to the C# -sharp implementation? Uh, copy to Realm in Java enables what we call standalone objects. We have standalone objects in the Xamarin version of Realm, but they are not fully complete. They do not support too many relationships. Uh, so standalone objects are one, one way to solve this. However, we are aware of the limitation of needing to handle uh, transactions, right transactions um, at the data layer. So we are planning to enable an enhancement that is going to uh, open and commit transactions for data binding. That is to say, whenever you use Xamarin Forms data binding, for example, uh, changes on the model layer are going to implicitly happen um, in the transaction. So for more tiered applications, certainly ones that use the repository pattern, uh, manual transaction handling is going to be not a concern very, very soon. And for more advanced scenarios, uh, like batch adding or modification of uh, objects in the database, uh, we encourage using the transaction API directly because this is designed with mind of uh, designing <laughs> with um, optimizing for batch scenarios in mind. But with data binding and certainly repository patterns, you don't necessarily worry about this from the get-go. So long uh, story short, uh, this is going to be handled by Rome, and users of the repository pattern are not going to have to worry about this. OK, great. So there's a number of questions about you know, integration with other technologies. So I'm going to ask a couple of those. So uh, one is, is there any support for auto numbering? So for example, if people want to integrate with other databases and they want to implement uh, primary keys. Which of course, it's, it's not a relational database concept, but it's something that they might use when they're you know, syncing externally. Right. Um, we are considering implementing that, but we don't have that at the moment. So there is maybe some of you have seen an attribute in the Realm uh, library called object ID, which is sort of similar to a primary key. But obviously, as we're not relying on the, the classical relational model uh, that really is where you need the primary keys, we don't have the same need for it. So it's mostly that you would have an object ID that is unique for each object so that you can retain it when you need to access it on a different thread. And this ties into something I feel like I should uh, touch on quickly. Um, when you're using Realm, if uh, you're using it on multiple threads, you are not allowed to transfer objects from one thread to another. That's one of the basic design uh, decisions that's been made. And it seems like a limitation, and in some ways it is, but it's also something that enables some very powerful patterns. So you cannot transfer one Realm object from one, for, from one thread to another. You have to find that uh, same object with a query. So we're going to implement a, a method. We don't have that quite yet, but that will give you very quickly a Realm object from an object ID. But what you have to do at the moment is query for that same object and then manipulate it when you want to do that on a different thread. And the same goes for Realm results and for, uh, for the Realm class itself. You cannot transfer those from thread to thread. You have to create a new one. OK, great. A um, couple questions, again, just about cloud synchronization. Are there any frameworks uh, available that might, say, assist with Azure synchronization? 
anything existing yet? No. But uh, yeah, no, we haven't been looking into the specifics. I mean, it's it's a very powerful thing to use on its own, and, and we are trying to make it as small as an API surface as possible and as a generic C-sharp interface as possible. So it should be trivial to implement with, with whichever provider you're using, but, um, but we obviously need to experience that and uh, work with it as well. So not, we don't have a lot of experience at this moment with those. And a question about pricing. So is Realm currently free to use on commercial applications? Yes, it's currently and always will be free. That's always great news. <laughs> and I should add that there's a business model for enterprise uh, situations that uh, with consulting and stuff, just so you can feel sure that we're making some money. But uh, the product itself will always be free. Okay, we're getting towards the end here, and I've, uh, for those of you who have asked questions, I've summarized some questions together, but there's a couple here at the bottom I want to ask. Uh, so here's one. And when you have an entity with inner entities, and those inner entities have more inner entities, <clears throat> uh, are they all mapped when edited, added, or querying? So I, I think the, the question is really, is there is there support for nesting of objects? Uh, if I understand you correctly, this is relationship nesting. So you would have an object pointing to another object, maybe pointing to a list of objects. From what I understand uh, and personal experience, this is somewhat of an issue with ORMs such as uh, Entity Framework or services such as OData, where you have to ha keep in mind when you write a query that following relationships is going to result in a costly join statement in the SQL query that is going to be generated. In the realm, this is completely free. So when you have a query on objects with relationships to other objects, uh, all those relationships are automatically populated as you access them, and it's very, very fast. Fantastic. So I'm not exactly sure the context here, but with IoT becoming so popular, how well will Realm work for real time? So, well, obviously you can run Android in a number of IoT devices at this moment. So if you're doing that, you could just use the Realm Android. As we said, it's it's highly optimized, but obviously it's like, as soon as you're doing something C sharp, you're not real time anymore. There's a garbage collector running and. Uh, there are multiple threads, and Realm itself creates multiple threads um, because, as we told you, there's this notification system that communicates so that if something changes on one thread or one process, that's being communicated to the others. So there is a bit of overhead that may not be suited if you have something that is of uh, very, very uh, limited, uh, like something that runs on batteries or something. It, uh, it may not be suited for that, but then probably you wouldn't want to be writing C Sharp. You'd be writing C, I assume. But overall, uh, Realm, is, like uh, performance, which is also uh, battery performance, is a very, very uh, big concern for us because we are strictly mobile. A big, big thank you. That was fantastic. Uh, I know for myself as a developer, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I think the number of questions showed that you've got a, a, a good base of people that are quite interested in the technology. Anything else you want to say before we wrap things up? Yeah, I think that uh, we hope that you will take a look at it and uh, please give us all the feedback that you might have. As I said, it's open source, so the .NET binding is open source, so you can find it on github slash realm slash realm dash .NET. I think we have a link to it here. You can see the link at the bottom there. Um, so go ahead and, and take a look at it and uh, and play with the NuGet package and uh, and give us uh, any bug reports, any feedback, any feature requests that you might have, and uh, we'll happily uh, take a look at all of it. Wonderful. I saw a couple more questions sneak in if you're up for just two more here. Sure. The question is, I have experience with cloud syncing. How do I help the development of that feature specifically? F for cloud syncing? Yeah, so if someone is looking to, say, help implement a framework to synchronize with a, a cloud service, is there any way they can okay. contribute to development? Well, get in touch for sure. I would say that sounds like something that might not belong necessarily in the primary repository, but maybe as an additional library or something. 
But that would depend completely on which service and how that would work and, uh, and so forth. So definitely get in touch with us. We're very open. We've already merged one PR from an external provider. We're very happy to accept uh, incoming contributions of any kind. And then find one last question here about performance, and it was just in relation to older devices. Is there any concerns running on, say, older Android devices, for example? Um, do you remember which is the older version we support of Android? Well, we go way back. We support everything uh, up from API level 10, or right. was, was 11. So on older, weaker devices, you're more likely to run into um, issues with uh, the garbage collector and everything else that adds uh, overhead uh, before you run in you run with uh, you, you run into any realm issues I should add that we support devices as constrained as watches for example fantastic well I think I think the summary is go check it out if you haven't played with it and uh, I think you'll be happy very happy with performance. Uh, again, one more time, a big, big thank you. Really appreciate your time today. And thank you for all the attendees and all the wonderful questions. And, uh, and thank you. I think we went a little bit over our time here as well. So I appreciate uh, all of your time. Our pleasure. Thank you. It was wonderful to be here. <laughs>